Hello, 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 and welcome to Art Snacks. How is everyone today? I'm Amy Murray with Sugar Hill Art Studios, and to, right now we begin our 30 minutes of art journaling. All right, so if you have been following along, or you're familiar, or if you're brand new, every month I put out 21 prompts. 21 because 21 times makes it a habit, right? So 21 prompts, that way it gives you a little leeway in the month. I don't want anybody to feel like they fall behind or can't keep up, whatever. So we do 21 prompts. There's a list, there's always a list pinned to my featured tab right here and also in my free group, okay? So there are 21 things here this month we are doing it in a circle journal, okay? So if you haven't seen this yet, or uh, this tutorial, I did this, you can see the full tutorial on my YouTube channel, all right, Sugar Hill Art Studio. And this is just a really simple, and it's just a different way to art journal. It's a different way to do our art. When we work in different shapes, right? A lot of us get very uh, used to, complacent with um, working in the same journal all the time and that our brains, our creativity gets kind of used to that and sometimes we run into a little rut. So we change that up. We change it up every month here at Sugar Hill. This month, circles. And if you're over in the free group, if you're not, request to be on over there. You do need to agree to the group rules in order for me to let you in. I sit there and I go through every single request. <clears throat> excuse me. So every single request I go through and I just need you to agree to the group rules because there's no self-promotion. There's no ads. I want to keep it a very safe community for all of us art lovers. We've got 2000 people in there now. It grows like crazy, but my biggest goal is to keep it a safe and supportive community. All right. So working in our circle journals and I had this little book page that I was painting some little watercolor fish on. If you're new to me or if you're not, you'll see we do a lot with a bits box, which is just a box that we keep full of little bits that we make. Uh, I played with some fish and some watercolor. Um, so it's the perfect bum, 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 fish. <laughs> um, perfect fish prompt, okay? So I got a cool technique I wanna show you. You don't need anything special except for something that's water soluble, which means that it will activate with water. I'm gonna turn you down. Oh, and the other thing, sorry, I'm reaching across here. The other thing you need is just um, some sort of plastic uh, packaging or a page, page protector, you know, anything like that will work. <laughs> Trace, I think you can go and change it. It's all good. Messing with my algorithm, girl. Just kidding. It's all good. It is all good. All right, I'm going to flip you down. If you're watching the replay, don't forget to say replay. Uh, and just let me know where you're watching from, what you're up to, what you love about art, mixed media art, art journaling. Just, just give a little hey, hey. <laughs> All right, quick flip down for the good old art snacks and we're gonna whip out a little art journal page within 30 minutes. Actually, we'll do it a lot less than 30 minutes, but this is a fun one. All right, so for starters, <clears throat> let me just move that. I am going to, now you don't have to, I could work with it right, you know, still attached. I just have some sorry ribbon uh, tying my little journal together right now. And what I want to do is I just, I want a nice, like this is a nice thick 140 pound watercolor paper. That's what I'm looking to work on today. You don't have to work on that. You could do this technique on any paper. I just know I want something a little bit thicker. Here's one, here's one, and here's one. So I'm going to go here to this. All right. And I'm going to, I am going to untie and take that piece out um, for ease of you guys watching. Typically, I want it. Um, and I'm just going to take this and set it over here. But to make it easier on you guys, I am going to do it this way. All right. <clears throat> I have some baby wipes because they are the best. This 
this piece that I pulled out. This is just some packaging. Looks like it's got some leftover residue on it. If I don't want that, I just can wipe it off. Okay, and you don't need a big, you can have a smaller, a smaller piece. See, water soluble, which means once I hit it with a baby wipe, with water, with anything, they're going to move, all right? Things like that are Tombow markers. They're the Woody Stabilos. They're the, ooh, have a sneeze. Hey, chew, excuse me, excuse me, I am sorry. Um, they're the Neo colors. There's so many different um, water activated, my intense, uh, intense um, watercolor sticks, right? There's so many different act crayons and different uh, mediums that can be activated with water. Um, you know, you, you need to get to know what you have in your stash and, um, yeah, embrace it. Get to know it. Play with it. Water soluble anything is super fun to have. Uh, I had bought these. I don't know if anybody has these. They were like marked down on sale. They're Jane Davenport's Power Pastels. Don't be fooled, okay? Because just because it's a crayon and it looks like anything else, these are smudging pastels. They're not water soluble. I can color with these and they're not going to move with water. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so if I take this and I do a little scribble, scribble, and then I take, say, the Woody. Let me put this all right here so you can see the difference. And just because, let me show you the Neo color because that's what I have here. Okay, there's three different. They kind of all look the same, but they're not going to all react the same. So make sure you know that. Look. And this is just cheap. Uh, it's actually the back of a, my calendar, but I keep, this is going to make great under paper, right? So it's just May's calendar from my refrigerator, but you can see activated, activated. And let me show you this one. Okay. I can smudge it with my finger, but it is not water soluble. See that? So sometimes I like to use these. Things might look the same. Don't think all crayons are created equal. That's pretty much what I want you to learn there. You've got to play with your play with your supplies and know what you have. I'm just going to wipe that up. We want something that's going to move with water. Okay? So I'm going to play with fish. And I really like this one. Kind of looks a little bit like an angel fish. Um, so I think I'm going to play with her, maybe this one, but n nonetheless, I'm going to grab the pink, yellow, and orange fish, okay? So I want my background to be the opposite. And one more time, because it's always my favorite thing to do. Let me just grab, if we pull our fish from kind of the pink, orange, yellow, right? We pull it from here. What's the perfect opposite? Oh, some blue green right here. So anything in blues and greens is going to be great for behind my fish, okay? So I'm just going to mark this up. Am I thinking? Not really. Am I worried if it's gonna look like Water? No, definitely not. So I'm just going to add some color in here. Ooh, sorry, that was probably really loud. Don't forget, sometimes use that opposite hand, right? We don't need to be detailed. I don't have to go too crazy because I'm just in this square or this circle space, right? A little squirt bottle. And let's see what happens. Typically I do add black and I didn't this time. So let's see, let's see if I like it. All right. So I'm just going to kind of put it down. Smoosh, let's see what happens. That's kind of cool. We got some cool movement there. Now, if I want more movement, I can just spray. This is why I wanted my 
thicker 140 pound watercolor paper. But then I can come back in here, right? And pick up some more, see that? It's kind of cool looking. Let's get, ooh, that was a good smudge. Get a little bit more of that green. There we go. Okay, see, how fun, how fun. Let's grab just a little bit more there. All right, I know it doesn't look too much like anything right now, but trust, 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 trust the process. All right, I could take bubble wrap now and oh what do i have here please tell me i have a piece of oh i have this under paper so i have this under paper that's just been a kind of a work in process all right and i'm going to just kind of stamp some of that off i'm just showing you that like you're never wasting anything. Don't be afraid to use those supplies. Layer, layer, layer. Sometimes we get perfect circles. Other times not so much. And I could just kind of come in here and just lay that on top. I know you can't see really 100% what's happening. Um, but I am just adding, adding spots and dots and just some more layers on my under paper that I'll keep doodling on and then I'll end up cutting it up and using it. Oh, maybe perhaps for a tag workshop coming up. <laughs> All right, let's, oops, did I forget to, I did. I did, I did, I forgot to plug in my dryer. We need to get this dry. So I do apologize, I have to use the dryer, but we're still gonna fall well within our 30 minutes. Well within, remember, if you have questions, I'm not seeing them right this second, but I will answer them before the end. Let's just get this. enough okay so the cool part of that whole process is you never know what you're going to end up with so just kind of putting something down right putting some some color down what if i actually do a shape with the neo color i don't know what's going to happen let's just see all right i kind of did get the line as I made it wet again. That's kind of cool. You never know what you're going to get, what things are gonna look like. That's the cool part of this whole process. So I'm going to just cut out this little fishy here, fishy, 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 just to kind of give me an idea of placement, but I'm not, I'm so not done with that background. What I did forget was my watch, so I have no idea what time it is or how I'm doing on time, but that's okay. Usually pretty good. Just want to prove to you that you don't need a ton, a ton, a ton of time. It's kind of fun. I might even, I might cut out this one as like a little, no, I'm going to leave just that. Okay. Let's. All right, I say it all the time, it's all about layers, right? So let's find some sort of stamp to use. And it doesn't, it 
doesn't matter what you use. I just have a whole bunch here, but I like a repetitive shape. Okay, so let's do... Let's keep it in the blues for now. Let's see how this one works. I don't want it exact. some layers in there okay it's not perfect I don't want it all over it um let's do right here maybe like a little oh you know what we could use where was that look at remember from making the circle journal the little um dots And maybe some neon green. And use that as a stencil. All right. And I'm going to kind of just scooch it because I don't want them all perfect. I want them kind of yeah, bubbly. There we go. Let's get one in there. There. All right. There's a shiny side to this, so you can use this one over and over and over again. You got yourself a little polka dot circle. Never, never get rid of stuff. <laughs> All right. What can we do? What can we do? Let's kind of play. I'm going to grab a wipe. I have a clean one. And let's just play a little bit here. Let's kind of I just want to work on that circle feel, right? And just kind of have that repetitive shape. And if I take this all right, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to lecture, but I'm going to talk for a hot minute. I'm going to talk for a hot minute about how important it is. Because what happened last week, it's not a big deal. I love when you guys ask me questions, right? But I got a lot of messages, a lot of messages asking for very specific, um, you know, materials and tools and, and, uh, art, art mediums on um, what I use to get this. And if I use gesso and if I use spray fixative and if I use this, that, or the other thing, what happens? Well, you have to play with your stuff. Okay. You have to kind of get in there and play around a little bit and figure out which materials you like, which ones maybe you don't like as much, you have to get in there and play with what you have in your stash. That is the biggest stressor I can give to you, okay? Like, I can't stress enough how important it is for you guys to remember that you have to play with your supplies. You don't need exactly what I have. It's not, it's it's you, it's your hand, it's your creative intuition uh, that you have to play with to see what's, you know, where it's gonna take you, where you're gonna end up. Let's kinda really activate this in some spots. So you have to play. That's why we journal. This is not like this isn't going in a museum. It's nothing, it's nothing major. It's a piece of paper. You have to play. Don't be afraid to play. You have to play. If you don't play, you're gonna drive yourself kind of crazy 
on, you know, asking questions or you're going to, you're going to put yourself in a complete, um, artistic funk. You really, really will. You will put yourself in an artistic funk, not even mean to, um, but it happens. It happens often. Um, because you're so worried about what that final piece is going to look like. Look, it's the process. I don't have a clue what I'm going to end up with here. Right now, I've got a lot of circles. Probably way too many circles. Right? And I could soften them or I can take a brush. And I wonder if I really might not want to be activated as much as I want them to be. All right, you, ha you have to play on your own. You have to make mistakes, all right? And as good old Bob Ross said, there are no mistakes, just happy accidents. Like, the man couldn't be more full of truth than that statement right there. Like, honestly... He really, really knew what he was talking about when he said that. Like, he didn't, he, your mistakes lead to your creativity. It's not a mistake. You, ha, you got to experiment. You've got to get in there. You cannot be afraid to have... Something, you know, you can't be afraid that you're going to mess up or that it's ugly. You're not allowed to compare yourself to others in the group or other art that you see. You're not allowed to compare yourself, period, on social media. I try to keep things very, very real. Uh, there are many, many things out there that are not real. <laughs> you do you. I say it all the time. You do you. And you need to. You really, really need to. Oh, I like this one better. You really, really need to embrace your art. You got to embrace the mistakes. I know I just went on a whole big rant there and you're probably like, what in the world? But this is, this is important stuff my friends you if you you're creative you're creative because you're watching this all right you've got you've got that little nook everybody has it just not everybody realizes it let yourself make mistakes allow yourself to share your work it's important all right I'm going to stop trying to make this background look like something, and I'm just going to fill in. I'm going to stop thinking that it's water. I have to. Just stop thinking that it's going to be water, and I need to just start splashing. All right. See what happens when we stop thinking, stop worrying, and we just get in there. We're going to have a fish. We're going to have some bubbles. He's going to be hanging, I guess. He's a little smaller than I want. Serendipity. I don't know. I've got a little cup. Expect surprises. There's a um, song, Anita Franco, from, oh, way back when. And one of her songs, one of the, the lyrics are, the little plastic castle is a surprise every time. And she's talking about a goldfish because the goldfish has no memory. And the little plastic castle is a surprise every time. And so maybe expect surprises, even though it's really big. Let's see if we can make it work. It's going to be kind of cool. Now, other people that see this might be like, expect surprises. It's a fish on a blue background. But I 
but but let's get this dried a little bit. I wonder how I am doing on time. I think I only have five minutes left. That's okay. It's really the first water soluble process I wanted to show you guys. I really want you to heed that. Check it out, try it, play with your materials. Expect surprises. We definitely need to shape it like something. And just a smidge of a little yellow plastic castle back there. That's what I'm going to end up doing. This. Let's go with the green. I wouldn't typically do that, but let's play. It might not be enough. I might have to go back to blue. Mm, yeah, it's not going to be enough. We smeared both on the same sides anyways. I like definition around my words. I'm going to splatter this with some white afterwards, so that's going to really bring out the white that I have sitting here. I'm going to draw a little plastic castle back there. Just ever so lightly, I might just give the shape of a castle with my watercolors. I don't want to keep you on too long. We're supposed to keep this within a half an hour. Uh, but this video will be loaded up to the tube. I might change the font. I'm just going to use what I have. Expect surprises. Now pay attention to, like, when you do your journal, do you have it up top? It doesn't necessarily matter where. Um... And we're going to just draw a little castle in here. So I will definitely get a castle going. And that's going to be my page. All right, let me turn it up. Let me see who has comments, questions, all the things. Ooh. Let's see, let's see. All right. Let's scooch back a smidge. Thank you for sprinkling. Let's see, are there any questions? Thank you, Dottie and Jess and whomever else said I like it. I got a mess going on in my room. I think I could use for crafting. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Love splashing, me too. Definitely gonna splash with some white at the end. Hi, Suze. Oh yeah, you are on the opposite side. <laughs> okay, so fun super fun technique to just grab save here's another thing to say right this you just saw me i had a bunch of them from my stamps we get these all the time as creatives right any any cellophane or you have it with um page protectors we probably have some page protectors laying around if you don't you probably i don't can you buy them at the dollar store you can certainly get them at many many places and you're going to use them but just a little bit of this, a little bit of some sort of fun, water-soluble material or medium, and a little squirt bottle, and have fun making some backgrounds, and then keep your layers going. All right. Uh, I want to try making the fish. Absolutely. Do those fish. Working on book pages is always fun too. Like sometimes you just get tired of, this is that, um, this is that uh, pasta book from the dollar store. So the pages are a little bit thick. It makes a good, a good background. Um, for a bunch of little fishies, I've got to, 
you can make the decision. You can either doodle on them now or just cut them out and put them in your bits box and doodle on them after you have the project down. Because like this little guy that I was just playing with, he might really need a surprise eye, right? He might need a big eye. So it's kind of good that I haven't doodled on that. Um, so yeah. All right, everybody. I will check out everything afterwards. It's been a half an hour. That's Art Snacks. I'll see you around. I hope you have a wonderful week. And don't forget, get over into the free group and continue to share your circle journal pages using the prompts. And if you're not using the circle journal, if you're not doing it in a circle, but you, um, if you, if you're working anywhere, you could work in a big journal, a little journal, you can just work on random pieces of paper. It doesn't matter. But if the prompts spur you to do something, share it in there. It's a safe space. All right. I'll see y'all later. Bye.